Vater. Luxemburgers like things to be predictable. So like everybody who was born in Luxembourg and grown up in Luxembourg, I was expected to become either a teacher, a banker, or a civil servant. When I was five years old, my parents asked me, David, that's my name, what do you want to become when you're an adult? I proudly told them I wanted to be the next Grand Duke. And they gently explained that it might be impossible and encouraged me to reconsider my future. Being an obedient child, I did. Like every good Luxembourger, I went to high school and university. I studied English and psychology. Now, you may wonder why psychology. I thought I could help the people who, just like me, had crazy dreams such as wanting to become the next Grand Duke. Now, I had reconsidered my future. I had a formal education. I had conformed to all the rules. The road to a predictable and happy life was assured. I became a magician. Yes, I know, that was the other dream. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, I thought the people around me would be very happy for me. But as it turned out, they all thought different about it than I did. Most of them said nothing. To make a long story short, I had failed everyone around me. In retrospect, I understand their fears and their reactions. As a teacher, I'd have an ordered life. As a magician, I'd be on the road all the time. As a teacher, I'd have a regular income. As a magician, I'd never know what to expect tomorrow. As a teacher, I'd have plenty of time to spend with my friends. As a magician, I'd have a hard time nurturing my friendships. The good thing about being a magician was, and still is, that you constantly question reality. And you look at things from a different perspective. So I thought, what if everyone else's failure, namely me, became his own biggest success. And bearing that premise in mind, I also thought that perhaps failure and success, just like beauty, lay in the eye of the beholder. So I reconsidered all the warnings of the people who had meant to help me. And they were right. I have been on the road all the time. I have visited over 20 countries and seen places to die for. I have indeed often wondered about my financial future and whether I'd make enough to actually earn a living with it. And uh, today, this uncertainty hasn't changed. The difference is that nowadays, I think about whether my next show will bring in 10,000 or 25,000 and where I'll do 10 or 20 shows next month. As for friends, yes, I have had a, time, a hard time nurturing my friendships. But luckily, over the last four years, that has changed. Thank you, Facebook. <laughs> I realized there and then that for most of my life, I had watched myself through the eyes of others. I had been dependent on their perception of failure and success. And I needed to take responsibility to create my own personal definitions of failure and success and to be willing to let go of who I thought I should be in order to become who I truly was. Now, filled with purpose and determination, I went ahead. I sent out promotional kits. I called agents, I found a manager. I started getting serious international gigs and worked with the best in the industry. However, before every major breakthrough, something went wrong. I analyzed the causes of this mishap and finally found it. There was only one. It was me. I had painstakingly worked hard to free myself from the perception of other people, from their influence, only to discover that right now I was sabotaging myself. Instead of a breakthrough, I ended up having a breakdown. So I had to find a therapist, and I set out to find out why I was constantly standing in my own way. After several sessions, she asked me if I had ever heard of fear of success. Well, how was I supposed, or how could I be afraid of the very things that I wanted to, to achieve? And then she went on to list the symptoms. Procrastination, all talk, no action. Fear of losing control, negative behavior, feelings of guilt. I plead guilty to all charges. She explained that every fear has a protective function and that fear of success could be as paralyzing as fear of failure. Now that was great news. If the therapy was to work, it would be a success. And apparently, I was afraid of success. So I had to learn that dealing with fear of success would be 
similar as to dealing with other fears. It doesn't change when you run away from it. It doesn't die when you kill it. Instead, it submerges into a, lay a deeper layer of your soul to come back and reappear whenever it needs to come back. I also found out that if you confront your fear and stop running away from it, it becomes less threatening and even changes for the better, depending on how seriously you take it and accept it. I know it's easier said than done, but I thought at that moment that if I didn't do anything, I'd feel like a failure for the rest of my life. So in time, I started to embrace those failures, and I realized that indeed they were much less threatening than they initially appeared. I was able to listen to them and to achieve a stronger mental and psychological balance. I felt stronger and was able to use the energy I had previously used to fight those fears to work towards my goals. And I think that to achieve any worthy goal, we must take risks. We must embrace vulnerability and the possibility of failure. To, we have to accept ourselves with all our strengths and weaknesses. And the moment we do that, we give ourselves permission to become who we truly are meant to be. And we are the only ones who know who that is. And at that moment, nothing will again stand in our way and everything becomes possible. And I think that perhaps I might still be a Grand Duke after all. Thank you.